Notification volume, zero percent. Good afternoon. Blind Prime here, and I have for you blind formers. And today, we will be knocking stuff over accidentally, and also introducing you to Transformers Earthrise Bumblebee, the Earthrise Cliff Jumper Mold Retooled. And also a creep. I realized I usually have Bumblebee here to give out some height stuff, and um, then I thought, I've never actually given you a Bumblebee video to give you some height stuff. So I'm comparing him with a creeper because uh, my cat brought me this creeper today, meaning that he found it on one of my shelves and then dropped it in my bed because, well, my cat is a dog. So, so you can see the creeper, which is like a three and a half inch figure, I think. I don't know. Uh, it's pretty cool. He stands up to Bumblebee's shoulder whenever he actually tries to stand, or right below his shoulder. So there you go, Bumblebee. Something smaller than you. You Creeper, you just go away. You keep falling over. It keeps trying to explode. Yeah, so for other things, um, Bumblebee came with a completely different weapon, but I hated that weapon so much. It was just, I mean, it made sense for Cliff Jumper because Cliff Jumper likes the big booms. But Bumblebee here, not really a big boomer kind of guy. So I took Alita 1's pistol, or it might have come with RC as well. I don't have an RC, I just have an Alita 1. But I noticed that she's got like the perfect little pistol. And I tried it out in Bumblebee's hand, and it fits pretty well. And, just, and it's like the perfect size for Bumblebee. So get yourselves a Netflix Alita 1, and uh, give that gun to Bumblebee. Because it's Bumblebee's gun. That's for all of you people who can't seem to find a Centurion drone pack that's less than god-awful amount of money. Alright, screw you scalpers, and now let's continue. For height-wise, we have Bumblebee standing. Now that's the 16. And that's 15, 14, 13, 12. Bumblebee stands at an awesome 12 studs tall. Isn't that cool? Yay, Bumblebee. Good old stud tallness here. You're so short. You have such an Napoleon. What happened to your sword? Bumblebee, where is your sword? You don't know? Maybe Nemesis took it back. Or he got his bird Giza to grab it from you. I mean, you were holding Giza at one point. I wonder if Giza got jealous. So let's transform it. We've got Bumblebee here. So to begin off with, you want to... Transform Bumblebee by grabbing his backpack, which is uh, what you can feel to be like the back end of uh, VW Bug. It's even got like a rubberized, uh, what's it? Uh, bumper. All right, I don't drive, so I forget names of cars stuff sometimes. Uh, oh, before I continue, uh, Bumblebee has a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six. Six siege ports counting his feet. Oh my bumblebee. You were just you were just pathetic. Alright, so let's get to the transformation. So grab it, grab the, the backpack thing. Not by the rubberized bumper. You don't want to do that, you'll break it. So grab it by the hard plastic and give it a yank. And you just pull it out. And when you pull it out, you'll notice that there are three male pegs. One of them stands taller than the rest and is on a hinge. So you want to take the one that stands taller than the rest and rotate it all the way backwards. Push it back until it falls into there. There's like a little cutout in the side of it so you can get your fingernail in there and pull it out when you want to put it back on his back. And it should leave two male uh, siege pegs sitting up and the third one is now stashed away. All right, we'll set it off to the side with the little Alita gun. Now let's look on his feet. So, Bumblebee, go on your head, just like that. There you go. Can you do a handstand, buddy? Can you do a handstand? If you kick your feet forward. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's got game? Bumblebee's got game. All right. So, first off with the Bumblebee feet, you want to feel the back of his heel. It feels like the side, like a door or something. It's got a little door handle imprint in it. You want to fold that out. And after that, you want to rotate the foot backwards. Um, 
so that the panel that you just folded out is going to lay to rest on the side of his knee and at the edge of his thigh. So it will lay to rest and flatten all the other panels out. You will also feel now that there is a wheel well visible right above the wheel. So the wheel, we just now rotate it on its little rotation uh, hinge and it will fit perfectly into the wheel well. So we go to the other side, once again, pop out the heel, lay it flat against the rest of the body of the vehicle, then rotate the foot assembly all the way up. You know, just follow the rotation, you will feel it. It's a little intuitive right there. Then rotate the wheel so that it fits inside of the wheel well. Yay, we're done with his feet. Now let's look on his arms and stuff. Okay, so for his, for his arms, we're gonna have to do some fun stuff. First off, we're gonna rotate his hips 180 degrees. Then you wanna pick, you know, uh, kinda fold them up. They're gonna fold backwards on a hinge. You will feel that hinge. And then we're going to unstick his arms, which can get a little sticky. Trust me on this. They do not like moving all that much. But once you get them out of their little peg holes, which to do, you just grab the robot in one of your hands, grab his arm in the other hand, and right near the shoulder, you want to put your fingers right near the shoulder and then you know, pull it. And if you have to, oh, come on. Oh my god. Come on. There you go. It's a sticky peg, guys. Give it a little force. Don't worry. You're not you're going to break him. He may require that little extra force. He does enjoy being in robot mode. And this is one of those Transformers that when you get him into a mode, he's hard to get out of that mode. He, All the pegs come together quite nicely. So, now that you've done that, rotate his hips backward. Well, uh, swing his hips backwards on that hinge. And at the same time, move his Service. Updating. Um, arm assemblies forwards. You can, it's a little difficult to do this, but once you've done it right, oh, the legs are just going to go up to where the shoulders used to be, and the arms are going to fold down to where the legs used to be. Everything's getting flip-flopped. The only thing that stays the same is the core, the center bit that uh, I think has an Autobot symbol painted on it. I'm not sure, but I have a feeling. I mean, it was in the show, so once you've done this, you then want to, before kind of clicking everything together, while everything's still kind of relaxed, grab the, grab the, come on, you little, there it goes. All right, so the, um, the chest piece that he has is actually the top of the of the bug, the VW bug. So you want to kind of pull it up on its hinge. It's also a sticky clamp. That's kind of my big negative about this figure is that all of these tabs are so stiff. And this plastic is so slidey, it can be difficult to grab it properly. It's a very nice plastic, though. So once you... Unhook the, uh, the, ch the chest piece and rotate it upwards on its little hinge. You'll notice that there is a little bitty flap in there. Now you want to fold the flap forwards and it will cover in the negative zone. That's between the two legs that are now where the shoulders used to be. And you will feel like the, the foot assemblies. Now you can feel them having a bit more to do with one another. Everything kind of feels like it's becoming a bug. So first off. Snap that middle piece back down into place. Yeah, it makes a nice satisfying snap. Snap the, um, the side doors into place like that. Make sure that the little piece that you had just unfolded from the roof, you know, from the chest piece is in all of its little grooves. Just drag your finger around it. Make sure that it's evened up and then push the front together nicely and tightly and then we'll go to the back 
Now for the back, we want to rotate each arm upwards on its elbow so that it sits at a 90 degree to the shoulder. So it will come, it'll look like a sideways L or just a couple of right angles. When we do that, we want to also make sure that we rotate the hands so that his thumbs are touching. Uh, this is just something I do for aesthetics. I don't know if everybody else does it or not, or if it's necessary for the transformation, but it's something I enjoy doing. Now that we've done that, here comes the last bit. This is the parts forming segment where we take that backpack. You remember those two male siege ports I explained earlier? Well, they're going to plug into his fists. Yep. He's going to hold on to his ad. Uh, um, he's, he's going to hold on to his butt. And uh, I'm going to just get those fists in there. Hear those nice clicks. This thing is going to be difficult to get out of its transformation state. But there he is. Pretty little. He's both simple and kind of complicated. His feet are really cool. And the negative, the biggest negative I have with this vehicle mode is zero siege ports. Zero. Zip. Zara. Nothing. There's one siege port hidden underneath him, which was his backpack siege port, but you can't even really get in there. And if I tried to put his Alita go one gun in there, it just sticks out the bottom and it doesn't roll. So sadly, he has to ditch the gun to transform. Now, let's talk about sizing for Mr. Bumblebee here. And size wise, Mr. Bumblebee even though we've done this a few times on the show before, is at uh, 12. 12 studs long. Isn't that nice? Good old Bumblebee. 12 studs long, you. Let's compare him with... Uh, no. Let's see. Who, who do we have to compare him with? Ah! Sideswipe. So let's compare him to Sideswipe. Oh, look at that. Um, sideswipe is actually just, just a smidge longer. All right, so you're a little little squatter than Sideswipe. Let's uh, let's compare you to Astro Train now. Yeah, yeah, Astro Train gonna keep keep you in his uh, in his little bot storage zone. Oh yeah, because that's not stupid looking. All right, but you can fit on top of it. Look at that. Yeah. All right. Enough, enough playing around with those guys. So compared to the Creeper again, look at that. Now the Creeper stands tall and uh, if the Creeper had arms, the top of Bumblebee would come up to just below the Creeper's shoulders. Like the top of the Creeper came up to just below Bumblebee's shoulders. And I think that's a funny little duality. And that's why I used the Creeper today, because that was kind of funny. Now, I hope you all have enjoyed the episode today. Um, and please like and subscribe. And, uh, oh, one more thing. A fellow YouTuber suggested that I kind of start rating these things, like by their transformation and stuff. And I'll come up with a rating system for sure, for sure. But I don't want to use stupid rating systems like everybody else's, you know, 1 through 10 and things like that. So I'm going to have to say that uh, I'm going to give this a complexity of uh, bananas. And an appeasing rating of hot sunshine on a cold day. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed the show and can't wait till next time. Bye bye.